Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Monday, July 26, 2021, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Tuesday, July 27th. Futures currently are down slightly. Uh, Dow Jones futures currently down 31 points, S&P down two and three quarter, NASDAQ down four and one quarter. Uh, this comes on the heels of slight gains in the market on Monday to uh, stretch um, the move into record high territory. Uh, the market's uh, been performing really well since last Monday. That was the day after options expired for July. Had a rough day last Monday, but we've now got a five day winning streak after the market did uh, have some fractional gains on Monday. Still, uh, we do see uh, futures down slightly as we uh, work our way toward the Tuesday open. We'll see whether or not the red futures continue overnight or whether we uh, move back into positive territory. Um, before we get into the action, let's go through the agenda for today. I'm gonna start off with that daily market recap as we always do, then we'll jump into talking technically. Chart breakouts earning spotlight, and we'll wrap things up with the three you must see. Before we get into any of that, though, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. If you're not already a Earnings Beats Digest subscriber, that's our free newsletter. You can go to earningsbeats.com and just uh, type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button, and we'll make sure we get you added into our community. I do publish a newsletter there three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the mornings before the market opens. Um, so again, type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. We'll make sure we get you on the list. Uh, talk a lot about um, earnings, relative strength, things that are important to us at Earnings Beats. I think it'll help in your trading uh, or, and or your investing. And again, it's free, no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. So we'd love to have you. All right, let's move on to the daily market recap. So on Monday, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average close up 82 points to a new record high, closing at 35,144. If you recall Friday, we closed above 35,000 for the first time in history. So we did tack on about a quarter of 1% to those gains or to that record. And uh, we set a new record on Monday. S&P 500 also set a new record, gaining 10 and a half points up to 4,422. It was the second close, second consecutive close above 4,400. And of course, those were the first two in history above that level. The NASDAQ uh, also uh, gaining ground, even though it was only three points, it did set a new record high. Uh, we finished on the NASDAQ at 14,840, Mid caps and small caps uh, also gained ground. So all five of our major indices were higher. Mid caps, not so much, uh, just about one tenth of 1%, challenging overhead resistance near the 50 day moving average. Small caps um, trading a lot worse recently, but it was, that was the best performing index on Monday. Small caps gained 11 and a half points or almost nine tenths of 1%. But you can see right here, we have been struggling just to get through the 20 day EMA. So still a lot of work to do there on the small cap index. As far as sectors go, energy and materials been very weak in July, really throughout the last couple of months, I would say uh, June and July, but uh, working our way back to the upside. So money rotating back in toward energy and materials, energy up almost two and a half percent on Monday. Materials only up about eight tenths of 1%, but we did get through the 20 day uh, moving average. We did that about two, three weeks ago. We couldn't hold it. So we'll see whether or not this time it sticks. We're going to run into some price resistance, probably at about 83 and a half. And then we've got that 50 day moving average, which is now just below $84 at 83.98. So we do still have some overhead resistance to watch for. But if we can get through both those levels, that would bode well, at least in the near term for materials. Healthcare, uh, the worst performing group on Monday. We've had a really good run in healthcare of late. So probably just a little bit of profit taking volume you can see was pretty light in the group, but it did uh, lose almost two thirds of 1%. As far as the two best stocks go, or two of the best stocks, both these companies had earnings reports and we're gonna take a little closer look at them in just a few minutes. But Hasbro, best performer on the S&P 500, gaining 12 and a quarter percent 
And you can see moving up, that was a pretty big breakout above that 100 level. Again, we'll talk about that in a bit. And then Perkin Elmer, PKI, rising seven and three quarters points, four and three quarters percent, also extending a breakout that uh, it had achieved on Friday. But you can see both of these stocks volume extremely heavy on this move to the upside. So great action there. Moving on to the 10-year treasury yield on Monday, we did move lower after uh, strengthening throughout last week, uh, Tuesday through Friday anyway. Uh, we did uh, move back down on Monday, losing one basis point to about 1.28%. Big question for me is, can we get through the 20-day EMA? If we can, then I would expect to see financials and industrials turn back up on a relative basis. If we can't, then it's going to continue to present some headwinds for those two groups. As far as uh, economic reports due out on Tuesday, first of all, the Fed meeting begins. So we have another Fed meeting kicking off on Tuesday. We'll get the latest policy statement on Wednesday. Also on Tuesday, June durable goods will be out. The expectation there is for a rise of 2.1%. Uh, May had risen 2.3%, so a slight pullback from that level, but still uh, pretty good numbers expected on durable goods. If we strip out the transports, durable goods expected to rise eight tenths of 1% for June, which is better than the May uh, three tenths of 1%. And then the May K Schiller home price index uh, expected to rise one and a half percent. April rose 1.6%. May FHFA house price index expected to rise 1.8%. Uh, in May, and that also was the same level that we saw in April. And then finally, July consumer confidence uh, expected to come in at 124.9. June was 127.3. So we're looking for a slight uh, move lower in consumer confidence. All right, let's uh, move on to talking technically. I want to go through a couple things here. First, you can see the S&P 500, really nice move to the upside. Um, again, Two closes now above 4,400. So that was kind of a big deal there. Um, I also wanted to show you, I mean, if you look at the S&P really over the last year, you would think that just it's just been this steady move to the upside. And below the surface, you know, doesn't you can't really see anything taking place below the surface. But I just want to show you the, and, and I'm just going to focus on the last year. So it's going to be the end right in here. July, end of July 2020 through the current uh, tw July 2021. And you can see that we've just been steady moving up. But I want you to look at growth versus value for the last year. And here I think it's pretty clear. You can see that the uh, growth stocks uh, versus value stocks rose through early November and then pulled back for a few months heading into February. Actually more sideways consolidation here, as you can see. And then growth stocks took a tumble throughout February into early March, and then again, late April into early May, leading up to some of these uh, inflationary reports that we got. Um, but since May, you can see the growth stocks are performing extremely well again. So while we've been looking at the S&P 500 going higher and higher and just steadily increasing here, I think it's pretty clear that it's not so uh, easy beneath the surface to try to have your money in the right area of the market. Because if you were in growth stocks in February through March or even April into May, uh, you were not performing well. It didn't matter what the S&P 500 was doing. Growth stocks uh, were being obliterated. But now growth stocks have been coming back and value stocks have been struggling. So it's really been, um, you know, that your timing has to be pretty impeccable in terms of trying to move and rotate with the market. But again, getting back to the overall market, all we're seeing on the, you know, on the surface is that the market just keeps going higher. But it is important to understand what's taking place underneath the surface. Then if we talk a little bit about small caps and mid caps, I'm going to just point out a couple of levels that I would watch here, because these are two groups that I want to make sure continue to participate in this advance. Now you can see here on the small cap index, we'd gotten up to about 1250 back in January, moved through that level in February. And now we've been running into these problems with small caps underperforming 
for the last several months. Again, if we go back over here to the S&P 500, you just see you know, US equities moving higher and higher. You go to the small caps though, and it's not the same. We've been going sideways. Small caps have not performed as well. So I want to make sure that we hold on to price support. And I think on small caps, the S&P 600 small cap index, I'm watching 1250. Now, if you notice, we've been trending below this 20-day EMA. We got some work to do to get back through these moving averages, to get back up to key resistance, and then to break out. In the meantime, if we fail to do that, we need to be watching to the downside. We don't want to see the small caps roll over and fail to hold key support. So that's the first uh, chart that I would want you to keep an eye on. The other one would be the mid caps. And mid caps, I'm going to look, you know, it doesn't, we haven't had as many tests. It doesn't maybe look as quite as clear, but I want you just to kind of focus on these moves. Here's a big move up. Here is the pullback. Next move up. Here's the pullback. Next move up. Here's the pullback. Next move up. Notice that we keep putting in higher highs, higher lows throughout this process. Now, once we made this breakout and printed this new high, this becomes the key low. And that's why I'm drawing this line coming in right here at this support area. So I'm watching 2,500 on the mid caps. Mid caps have a little bit more room to the downside before we hit that 2,500 level. But we still have similar type resistance levels to, to, that we need to negotiate. Gotten through the 20 day barely. Uh, we've got the 50 day overhead and then we've got the highs from back in April, early May that we're gonna need to negotiate. So the mid caps um, still choppy, still moving more sideways, but I believe consolidating before we get another breakout to the upside, I think it's coming. All right, let's move on to uh, chart breakouts. So I wanted to go over those two stocks I mentioned at the top of the show, Hasbro and uh, Perkin Elmer, the PKI. So let's take a look at these two. The first one, Hasbro, you can see 103.72 is where we closed. If you look back at the chart, we've gotten up to this 100 level on multiple occasions without, able, without being able to get through. And when I did Trading Places Live on Monday, this is one of the stocks that I talked about um, that had come out with strong earnings and it was looking to gap up. And one of the things I said was it needed to get through this 100 level. Otherwise, failure to do so probably would send it back down. Well, you can see now with hindsight, volume heaviest we've seen in many, many months. And we were able to make this breakout on a closing basis above 100. Accumulation distribution breaks out to a new high. I think that's very bullish. And then we also had um, on a relative basis, you can see Hasbro versus the toys moving back up, not far now from a 52 week high. The big problem with Hasbro is not so much Hasbro, it's, the, it's its peer group. If you look at toys relative to the S&P 500, we're down near a 52 week low. So this has not been a great group. It has not been a very good group. And when you look at it on an absolute basis, it's simply going sideways. I absolutely would watch this, these lows because they line up essentially with those highs. So if I, um, let me pull up that uh, line and let's take a look and mark that right there. So these high, this high, this high, the October high, and then notice that lines up beautifully with these lows. So broken um, resistance becomes support. And that's you know, technical analysis 101. So I think as long as toys hold around 1290, the group is okay. What I'd like to see is the group start to strengthen. If it does, you've got now a stock that could become one of the leaders in Hasbro because we did get that solid earnings report. Uh, earnings absolutely blew away estimates. And then uh, we got the breakout to confirm. So really good action there on Hasbro. Uh, the other one I mentioned, as I uh, talked about, Perkin Elmer, PKI. Look at the high from back in January. And notice we came up, the volume's been picking up the last week, and we were able to negotiate close above that level on Friday. Gapped back down and tested that breakout level. But once again, broken resistance becomes support. And then we took off from there. Look at the volume today. 
on PKI. Very strong, one of the heavier days the last 52 weeks, confirming this move. A, the AD line breaking to a multi-month high and then relative strength versus medical supplies back near a 52-week high. Kind of like toys, medical supplies, not been one of the, the better areas though. So I want to make sure we hold on to relative strength. And if this group starts to improve, PKI certainly has a lot more room uh, and possibilities to the upside. All right, let's move on to earnings spotlight. So I wanted to go over a handful of stocks here that reported after the bell on Monday. The first one I wanted to look at is Tesla. So, you know, if you look at Tesla and you look at where we were back in January and you see where the AD line was, first of all, the AD line has pretty much just been flat ever since then, even though Tesla has moved from 900 down to 657. So I think as we've seen consolidation and we've seen some selling and so forth, I think there's accumulation that's been taking place. So as we've gone through periods of selling, I think Wall Street um, firms are accumulating Tesla for the long term. So that could mean a breakout at any point. And of course, earnings were coming out on Monday after the bell. And so I wanted to see if this was going to be a catalyst, perhaps, for a move to the upside. Now, Tesla was looking pretty good after hours. Let me see if I can get you the latest there. Um, it was up as much as $20 after hours, but it did settle down last time I looked. It was up uh, a much more modest amount. Yeah, it's up $7. So uh, finished at six fifty seven sixty two. The last after hours trade uh, was six sixty four thirty. So we are up a little bit, but I want to show you a pattern here that I would really keep an eye on with Tesla. And that is a symmetrical triangle. So if we take a look at the, or connect this high that we had and come down here, you'll see essentially these highs have been getting lower and lower. But at the same time, I mean, I could go from here. I'm gonna see if we can connect all the way from like over here. Um, but you can see this whole, you know, last year, we've essentially been moving up and then sideways consolidating. And I mean, you don't have to go all the way back there. We can just use this last, these last uh, two months or so. But you can see the lows getting higher and higher and the highs getting lower and lower. And we are literally squeezing into this very tiny area now. So what I would be looking at is, can we make a breakout above the recent highs at about 700, maybe 695? Or are we going to see a breakdown below the recent lows down closer to 620? Because I think that these are the two key levels. Because if we go below 620 support, we're also losing this trend line to the upside. And if we go above 695 or 700, then we're also breaking above this downtrend line. So I think this is gonna be the, the initial key to watch on Tesla. Do we get through 695 to 700 first, or do we go back down and fail to hold that 620 area as support? And watch the volume as well, because I think the volume could help us confirm one of those moves. If we break down on heavy volume, I think we could be heading back to the 550 level. If we break out on good volume, I think the first stop would be up at around 775, get through that level, and then you've got 900. So I, that's what I would be watching Tesla right now. Uh, the numbers, very strong. I believe that they reported a $1.45. I'm going off of memory, uh, but I think their earnings were a buck 45 and uh, expectations were 90 cents. Now you have to understand in a low interest rate environment, when you get a company that's breaking out like this in terms of its uh, earnings and blowing away estimates, it normally results in a reevaluation of market cap because now future growth rates are impacted, low interest rates at those future, you know, if you start changing growth rates by very much, that really impacts earnings in a very, very um, big way. And then you take all those future earnings that have just been, you know, 
increase significantly and discount them back at a very low interest rate. And that's what results in huge valuation increases. I think the folks talking about PE ratios, I think they're out of their mind. Um, when you try to compare PE ratios in 2021 to PE ratios back in 2000 or 2007, you are literally looking at apples and oranges. And I know there are a lot of folks say, well, you know, you always say that until after, and then you go back and, you know, realize that, hey, it, things were overpriced. I'm pretty confident with my background that when you've got interest rates as low as they are right now, and you've got earnings growth as high as they are right now, that those earnings are unbelievably valuable. You know, when you're in a, when you're, when you have a 10 year treasury yield at six or 7% in your growing earnings, you have a pretty high floor in terms of the 10 year treasury yield that you can invest in. You could invest and get 6% on your money. Right now, there's not that alternative. You can invest and get 1.2% on your money. Earnings growth, accelerating earnings growth is so much more valuable in this environment than it is when interest rates are higher. You have to understand that dynamic. When, you, when I see anybody publishing an article and talking about PE ratios now and comparing them to where they were in 2000, to me, it makes no sense whatsoever. And uh, disagree with me if you feel free, you know, if you want to. Um, but I'm telling you, I've done valuations and low interest rates make a huge difference in valuations. I believe rates will stay low for an extended period of time. And I, don't, I do not think these companies are overvalued. If anything, as growth rates pick up, I think they're undervalued. And I think you're going to see companies uh, there. I think you're going to see the S&P 500 continue to accelerate to the upside. All right. Uh, anyway, that was a long discussion on Tesla. Uh, we got to get through some other stocks, but uh, let's move on. UHS. This is an interesting stock for me too. Uh, really good results here. Um, and I just looked back. Tesla did report 145 versus 90. UHS reported 376 versus 275. Stock was up 6% after hours. So it looks like it is going to make a breakout above these prior highs. And you've got a stock that's doing pretty well. First of all, healthcare providers trying to make a breakout. This stock was just at a high. Back here at this high, it was leading its peers. As it consolidated, it pulled back. But now with these earnings, I'm looking for a breakout on UHS. Next up, TFII. This is TFI International. This is in the trucking area. Truckers haven't been doing very well. TFII just came out and blew away estimates. Buck 44 versus 99 cents. Stock up 7% after hours. AD line looks great. It, this is a huge relative performer. It's a beast. TFII is a beast. And uh, so I would be watching this very uh, closely. I do think because it's so stretched, um, and I think the stock was trading like at 112 and after hours, I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock gap up if it trades up intraday. Just be careful if it comes back down below the open because it could sell off. It could be a wild swing. They, and almost like we saw back in January where we got up to $77.00. And then the very next day, it was as low as 65. I wouldn't be surprised if we get that kind of volatility with this stock. I do really like the stock. It's just already stretched and it is up after hours. It could be a um, you know, buy on the rumor. And then as, when the news hits in the morning, maybe we start to see some selling. So just be careful from that angle. And then the last one I wanted to show you is CALX. This is Calix Networks. Lots of struggles right here in this 48 to 50 area. See all these tops right in here? I see equal highs. I see rising lows. I see an ascending triangle that, if broken, could lead to a move from about 48, I'm going to say up to maybe 65 based on the measurement. So this is one certainly to keep an eye on. It was up two and, two and a third percent after hours. So that would be what, uh, 94 and so probably about a buck 10. That would be up close to about $49 in after hours. 
And you can see if we gap up above and let's, let's take a look at the exact level, the highest close on this stock, there's 48.98. Yeah, I think 48.98 is gonna be the key level. And after hours, we were right at about that area. If we open 49 or above tomorrow, I think that's going to be a great sign for CALX. So let's watch for that. All right, let's move on to the three you must see. I just want to point out, you know, these potential tops and reversals. So the first one here, JKS, this is Jinko Solar uh, holding. Do you see, I'm, I'm going to shorten this chart. I just want to look at the last few months. I want you to see this breakout here. So we kept going up here around 62 and a half, couldn't get a close above. Look at this day, we were up to 65 intraday, clearly breaking out above these prior highs. And then we reversed and closed back down for the day. Anytime I see a struggle at a certain level and I see a false breakout like this, if I was in the stock, I would sell it. As a short-term trader, I would get out of it. If you like to short and you're looking at the stock, you can get out and even short it if you wanted to. Now, I know, you know, again, this is hindsight. We can look back and see that it's come down the last two days. But this is something that I've recognized for many, many years. When you get these false breakouts and you come back down close near the low of the day, you need to be careful because when you're in breakout territory, it should lead to more buying. And instead, we got the opposite, which tells me that perhaps we were seeing some distribution by market makers, maybe on behalf of their institutional clients. So anytime you get this reversal like this, I think you've got to be careful in the near term. This is not, you know, I don't look at candlesticks for long-term signals. I look at candlesticks for short-term signals. And that to me is a short-term sell. Next up, ARGX. Now look at this, I'm gonna again, shorten this to look at the last three months. So see that prior high over here, trying to get through 325, 322, I think looks like the highest candle body, intraday 325, look what happened here. We got up, went as high as, I don't know, 327, 328, came back down and closed at 317. We had the breakout intraday and we failed. Next two days, more selling. Now we're back down near support. So as a trader, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to trade within a range like this. So I think this is a almost a textbook example of how market makers um, are able to build positions. So you get a lot of folks buying stock on a false breakout. Market makers are shorting, and then they drive it back down. That's when the folks that were buying at the top sell, and then market makers can cover and build positions cheaper. Got to be careful there. Last one I have here is Overstock. And you can see there another big move up here, false breakout. Look at what happened after that. Got to be careful on these false breakouts. All right, that's it for me. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Next uh, Trading Places Live will be over at earningsbeats.com on Wednesday. That'll start at 9 a.m. Eastern. Hopefully you can make it. Have a great day on Wednesday and uh, or on Tuesday, I should say, and be back on Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.